OK, you are all packed and ready to go. But when you get there, because the sky is 100% covered by cloud, those fantastic landscape shots seen in the mind's eye do not live up to expectations. So what can one do to rescue this seemingly impossible situation? Your time is limited, but you are desperate to return home with images to wow your audience. I might be able to help. I work to two golden rules. Minimize or get rid of the sky. Its inclusion, even on a dull day, becomes the brightest part of the picture, and so the eye keeps going to it. Secondly, try and include warm tones. Now, this walk under a tree avenue successfully removes the sky, but it is very green. A wooden shot in autumn is much better, and using an electronic finder adds that touch of magic for getting the exposure right. Warm autumn hues also lift an open landscape, and whilst I would like to see the mountain tops, without the sky, the colours now sing out. A coastal view is more challenging, but it can be sold by having a strong foreground interest, such as marum grass, seaweed, or sand patterns illuminated by a bright but cloudy sky. Closer to hand, the low level of light allows us to take shots of water at longer shutter speeds without resorting to filters, and gardens respond well without a sky, and flower detail in particular after rain. Architecture responds well in soft light, particularly when framed, but Longer views require a bit of extra creativity when the sky has to be shown. Now this view of the cathedral is framed by Lincoln Castle, cutting out most of the sky. The west front of the cathedral appears to be sunlit. That may have been the case for one brief moment on an otherwise cloudy day. I zoomed in on extreme telephoto and the perspective has been flattened to the photograph's benefit, showing every tiny detail. Notice too how the stonework of the castle shines under soft light, but watch depths of field. This was F4, reducing depth of field, and the near left wall has gone a little soft. I should have brought the focusing forward and then used the hyperfocal distance to make sure that it was completely sharp from front to back. When traversing open landscapes, I hope for that fleeting moment of sunlight. There are times when the weather is so bad I might go home if it starts raining. That was the case at Stiperstones, but somehow that bright horizon saves the image. Now, doesn't that look like a giant caterpillar climbing up the hill? From King's House Hotel, the foreground receives a fleeting touch of brightness, whilst in contrast, rain passes Buko Etif Moor. Strong foreground interest helps this shot of an incoming ferry, and a dead tree offers a stark contrast to the heavy cloud. And yes, I did get wet. It can be guaranteed that the moment you leave, out pops the sun. Thankfully, here on Box Hill, I waited. The mist gradually dispersing, allowing the sun to finally, hooray, penetrate the scene. I got some great shots now, and later too, but after a visit to the nearby cafe, 